Tidy data are easy to manipulate, visualize, and analyze, while messy data always interrupts the analysis and invites mistakes. So tidying up data before analysis pays off a great deal in the long term. But how do we actually tidy up data? Well, if I had to summarize the whole idea of tidy data into one sentence, I would say whatever changes in your data, put it into a column. Why columns? Well, because columns are the easiest way to store similar data. Important is that the data in every column is similar, but not identical. So the data vary. For example, age varies from 0 to 100, gender varies from male to female. That's actually why a column is always a variable. And the variable is exactly what we need to make any type of analysis possible. Let me make tidy data even easier for you. There are only three simple principles for tidy data. First, each column is a variable. Second, each row is an observation. And last, each cell is a single value or only one piece of information. For the sake of simplicity, let's say that any data set which does not follow these three rules is messy. And the problem with messy data is that it requires different strategies and tons of work to extract different variables in order to enable different statistical analysis. These three rules of tidy data seem so obvious that you might wonder whether messy datasets even exist. Well, unfortunately, most real data is messy because there are so many opportunities to mess things up and people are usually very creative. Leo Tolstoy once said, happy families are all alike, while every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Like families, tidy datasets are all alike, but every messy dataset is messy in its own way. Does this mean that messy data is bad? Absolutely not. Messy datasets might be very convenient for data collection and for having a good overview of the whole dataset containing all the information we have, including explanatory columns, commentaries, colors, etc. However, while useful for you, it is useless for statistics, which needs only variables and observations. So you might end up having two tables, one for you and the other one for statistical analysis. Let me show you the most common cases of messy data and how to fix them. The first one is when one variable is stored in multiple columns or when column headers are actually values, not variable names. Different time points, for example, years or days are usually stored in different columns. And while it might be convenient for recording data, it's hardly possible to analyze it. Why? Well, if we have time, we usually want to study change in something over time, right? But a variable time does not exist if years are spread across different columns. Moreover, if we see this table for the first time, we have no idea what those numbers are. So they are also not a variable because they are not in a single named column. Making this wide dataset longer creates two new variables, which immediately allows to study the change in tuberculosis cases over time for every country. So every combination of a country and a year becomes a single observation of tuberculosis cases, and with that, a single row. But if we overdo that, we can end up with the second most common problem, where multiple variables are stored in one column. As mentioned before, the observations within one column are supposed to belong together. For example, gender with categories females and males or countries like Brazil and China. However, it's important to separate several categories of the same variable from the column key, which stores two different variables, cases and population, in one single column. Cases and population do not belong together and thus cannot be analyzed. To solve this problem, we simply make a long table wider. Now, having two variables, we can calculate the rate of tuberculosis by dividing a column cases by the column population, which would not be possible if both values would be stored in the same cell, being the third common problem. 
This one can be very sneaky, because it pretends to convey a lot of useful information, like a range of values from 0 to 5, undecided values like 2 or 3, or some borderline values like below 3 or above 99. To fix this problem, follow the third principle of tidy data and always put only one value in one cell. And please, don't use any special characters for numeric values, because it will produce the next most common problem where different types of data, numbers and text are stored in the same column. Data can be either numbers or text. Any text or special characters inside of a numeric column converts the whole variable into text. Words like unknown or missing are the most common examples of text inside of numeric columns. If the value is missing, it's better to leave the cell empty. By the way, ironically, missing values can sometimes cause the most damage, so it's really important to understand what a missing value really is. The real missing value represents a measurement or observations that should have been made but wasn't. One of the non-intentional mistakes is to put zeros into cells with missing values. Think about measuring blood pressure of a cat, for example. If cat's owner doesn't bring the cat to the clinic on Monday, the blood pressure record should remain empty. However, if we put zero instead of a missing value on Monday, that would mean that blood pressure of our cat was measured and it was zero. So our Monday cat was either dead or a zombie. An example of a real zero is if you measured virus load of that cat on Tuesday but did not find any virus. In this case, a zero means that our cat is absolutely healthy and it's important to record that zero. So, a zero conveys a lot of information, while a missing value conveys no information and should therefore remain empty. But the most complicated form of messy data occurs when variables are stored in both rows and columns. For example, days of the week is our day variable, which we would like to have in order to study blood pressure of cats over time. So, we'd need to put the days into a single column. Then, if we want to estimate an average on Monday, we can't do that, because Monday contains two different values, blood pressure and virus load. Thus, we need to split the column test into two different columns and just move the values. In this tidy data, values inside of every column belong together. Finally, let me quickly show you a few more examples of messiness and the checklist to follow in order to keep the data tidy. Remove empty rows, remove empty and constant columns, remove any combined cells, use only the first row as your header, store same data in the same table. For instance, if control and treatment are in two tables, put them below each other and create a new variable group because this is exactly what we want, compare groups. Then, if multiple Excel sheets contain similar information, for example, multiple years, combine them into one table and create a variable years, because we often want to study something over time. A thing to remember is that statistics has no good taste. Thus, simple is better than beautiful. So, any visual effects like colors, italic or bold font, etc. don't provide any information, because statistics is blind. Thus, if colors are important, turn them into variables. If you want to show that some of the observations aren't very good, for example, calibration error, create a new column error and use 1 every time you aren't sure and zero every time you are sure about the measurement. That would later allow to exclude these ones easily if we would want to. Use short, simple, but still clear column names instead of long explanational names, because when you start to work with them, it will hurt. Two short names like D or S are also bad because they don't communicate any information, while days or species do. Check for similar but not identical categories, mostly created by typos, 
because cat, cat with a space, and cat with a dot could be considered three different categories. The solution for that is to go to the Excel table, data, filter, and to check all categorical variables. Remove all the columns and data which do not participate in the analysis. As mentioned above, you may keep two tables, one for yourself with all the informations and colors, and one new minimalistic table for the analysis. But please don't remove rows or columns only because they have some missing values. Otherwise, we would lose a lot of existing information. Don't summarize, calculate, or explain something on the side or below the table, because the software will try to incorporate this information in form of variables or observations. If you plan to use our software, don't code categorical variables into numbers. For example, instead 1 and 2 for sex, write female and male. For SPSS or other software, you might need to code them. And last but not least, if you think your table will become too long or that tidying up the data is too much work, stop thinking that, because approximately 80% of time in data analysis is spent on cleaning and preparing data for calculations. So, these were just the most common messiness examples I encountered. But the human creativity is not to be underestimated. Thus, as you can see, it is much easier to learn what to do, namely only three principles of tidy data, than what not to do.